this is what this power station excels at. So this is what came in the box. We have this uh, solar panel and uh, packaged with it, we got these uh, Velcro straps. We got uh, some documentation for the solar panel and then MC4 to XC60 cable. Again, that all came with the solar panel. With the power station, we got uh, some documentation, an AC charging cord, and then obviously the power station itself. Quick tour on this unit. We've got an AC plug rated to 300 watts with a pure sine wave. We've got two 18 watt quick charge USB type A ports and a 100 watt power delivery port. We've got the AC and DC power buttons, obviously your screen power button. Got this really nice handle on the top with a huge wireless charging pad. On the end here, we've got a cigarette style DC outlet and we've got the solar input. It's rated 12 to 60 volts at 8.5 amps. Really nice range of voltage for a power station this size. I love seeing that. On the back, we have a light. Click it once, it looks like it's on low, medium, SOS and off. So low, high, and SOS. And then we've got uh, the AC charging port on this side. It does support their app via Bluetooth. It says here that the charging from the wall gives you about 200 watts and it will charge in about 1.5 hours. Solar and car charging takes three to four hours. And then you can combine AC input and the DC input and get about 300 watts for a one hour charge. And as far as specs go, it is a 288 watt hour battery. And I couldn't find anything in the manual that says anything about this, but uh, on their website, the battery type they're saying is a terrinary lithium battery. So it is not lithium iron phosphate. So keep that in mind. And then it has a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter that can surge up to 600 watt. Quickly test the wireless charging capability. Yep, immediately start charging. I'm super stoked about this solar panel. Just the fact that they uh, send you these things to secure it with, open up a whole bunch of options for on the go solar solutions. So it's thin enough to, to bend, right? But yeah, it's still uh, quite rigid and thick, which I think is a great, great balance. Because if you get them too thin, they're just flopping all over the place. And then too thick, they don't bend. So I think this is a fantastic balance of flexibility and rigidity. To 100 watt panel, uh, I think this means to say VOC, open voltage. 30.6 volts, maximum system voltage, 120 volts. And you can pause the video here if you wanna see any other specs. All right, check it out. Beautiful cloudless sky. As far as the eye can see, perfect day to do some testing with this awesome flexible 100 watt solar panel from All Powers. We're going to be hooking it up to this S300 Plus power station and uh, let's see what kind of performance we've got. It's little things that can make a difference. Uh, something as simple as this little cable Velcro tie right here uh, to keep your cables uh, intact and organized on this panel while it's not in use. Love seeing that. All right, just kind of got that uh, panel propped up there and uh, love it because uh, it's just got MC4 connectors, so no proprietary garbage there. And then at the other end, we've just got uh, the XT60. So let's just, uh, Plug this into the power station. Look at that, uh, 88, 87 watts, fluctuating right around there. That is really good performance for a single 100 watt solar panel. I can already tell I'm gonna be uh, using this a lot, uh, especially on the go. I'm really liking how uh, portable it is while still being very durable and strong. This is definitely a better solution than like those tacky folding uh, portable solar panels. I'll insert here uh, why I think that. This panel is only about three years old, been used very lightly, occasional camping trips, maybe been used five times camping. And uh, anyway, it's toast now. If you look at this right here, that is melted right there. And uh, if I flip it over here, you can see uh, the melt mark on this side as well. This panel uh, does not generate uh, any electricity anymore and it is out of warranty and it's incredibly expensive. So as you saw, that point where the solar panel bends broke almost immediately. I mean, it only lasted a few times. So having one of these, and if I just got one more, that would actually give me 40 watts more than that other panel that was busted. So be sure and check these panels out. I'll leave a link for this uh, down in the description along with the, the power station so you guys can uh, check it out further. I was curious to see what uh, the impact would be if it was flat instead of angled. And you can see now we're pulling in 56 watts. So still a good uh, chunk of power, but uh, definitely better to get it angled uh, correctly. All right, crazy but true. All Powers has packed in Bluetooth capability to this little teeny power station. So let me show you how that works. Uh, you just come over here to the DC button that's also the Bluetooth button. And what we're gonna do is just push and hold this. And you can see right there, the little Bluetooth symbol showed up in the screen. So now here in the All Powers app, push add Bluetooth device. And down here at the bottom, we're just gonna hit next. And you can see it immediately finds it. So we're going to go ahead and connect to that. And I will just give you a quick rundown of the app. You can see we are charging uh, this power station at the moment. Right below the input and output watts, we have the option to turn the AC inverter off and on. And then we can also turn the DC stuff on below that. We have the ability to change it from 50 to 60 hertz. I'm going to leave that at 60 because I live in the US. And then you have your LED light switch. We'll turn that on. 
no matter what you do, it will always just turn the light on in low mode. Tapping the three dots here in the top right corner, uh, we can uh, delete uh, us uh, from the user, but that's about it. We can rename it uh, if we would like. And that's all you're able to do from the app. So it's very bare bones and basic, but you really don't need anything more than that on a power station this small. Does this power station work with pass-through charging? I've got it plugged into the wall right there. And I've got the AC inverter turned on and I've got a tower fan here. We're going to see if while it's charging, if it will pass power through to the load. Let's see. Yep. Might be hearing a lot of wind in the microphone there, but it does accept pass-through charging. That is fantastic to see because sometimes these small power stations don't do that. I'm gonna do a quick AC capacity test on this S300 plus power station. Okay, now that we depleted this uh, power station to zero, we are going to see how long it takes to fully recharge. Now at the moment, nothing is happening. I think it may have overheated, uh, or at least gotten a little toasty uh, during that uh, discharge test. So I think it's cooling itself off or waiting for it to cool off before it starts charging. Anyway, uh, we, I just uh, barely plugged this in because uh, I need to wake it up to get the app open uh, because the app uh, will stay online. The screen times out. So we will train the time lapse on this. Notice that uh, it is 6.47 p.m. that uh, we're starting this. And we're going to see how long it takes to start charging. And then once that happens, we're going to see how long it takes to charge. The claim in the manual is an hour and a half. All right, check it out. It is almost 10 p.m. And we just charged to 100% state of charge. Something you won't find anywhere else on YouTube are these real world tests. This was a great one because as we saw, when you discharge it uh, fairly rapidly and you want to recharge it, it can take a long time for it to cool off sufficiently so that it will start to recharge. It was over an hour before this started charging and then it charged at a slower rate than advertised for, I'm sure in an effort to keep itself cool, which is a good feature to have. We want to be safe first. But by the time I noticed that it was recharging, we were to 28% state of charge already. From the 28% to 100%, it took longer than an hour and a half which is the claimed charge time. Now it could be faster when it's cool, but I think it's very helpful to see that uh, you could potentially get yourself in a pickle if you're in a rush and you've depleted this and you're trying to recharge it quickly to get going again. It may not be as fast as you think. So just keep that in mind. Can this All Powers S300 Plus run a full size kitchen refrigerator freezer? The answer is no. It is too small for that. Can this S300 Plus run a 120 volt mini split heat pump? No. It's too small. What about running a whole home microwave? Well, this guy's a little too small for that too. Would this be able to power a whole home gas furnace? Once again, no, it's too small. What about a full size vacuum cleaner? Nope, that is too small to run that. Could this S300 Plus run a high-end desktop gaming PC workstation? The answer is maybe, depending on your setup. My setup is uh, far too much for this little guy to run. When I really push this uh, computer, it, it can pull in excess of 600 watts. This can only produce 300. Now, if you had just like a basic desktop that uh, didn't have a big graphics card in it uh, or anything and isn't overclocked and doesn't have three 4K monitors, etc., uh, you could uh, potentially run it uh, for a little while off this power station. Could this S300 Plus run a batch of wash? Uh, once again, no. Too small. So you may be asking yourself the question, well then what is this good for if it can't run any of those things? Well, let me show you. First and foremost, I've got it sitting on a scale and check it out. It only weighs six pounds, 14.75 ounces. For the size and capacity that this power station has, it is hands down the lightest one that I own in its class. So it makes it a total joy to take with you on the go. This is what this power station excels at. So check this out. I've got a tablet, a laptop, a cell phone, another laptop, all charging from this power station. You can see there that uh, we're pulling around 200 watts, fluctuating uh, a little bit uh, here and there, depending on uh, what's using what. Uh, I've got uh, this uh, PC uh, laptop plugged in to the AC power right there. And uh, obviously it's powering it uh, just great. Don't know if you can see, but uh, we do have a little lightning bolt there saying that uh, the computer is charging. And then all these other devices, again, not sure if uh, you'll be able to see, but uh, they are all charging. And of course, you know, how many times you're going to charge these uh, will vary based on how power hungry they are. I'd be able to get a lot more runtime using this laptop than I would using this laptop. 
If you look here, it's it's estimated this power station will last uh, just over an hour. It's jumped up to above an hour and a half. Let's just be conservative and say an hour running all of these devices uh, the way I'm using them. That's pretty darn good for all of these devices. Just think how much longer you'd get if you were just charging, you know, two devices at once. So trying to run all of these at once. So if you need mega power on the go for your portable electronics in particular, you really can't beat this little guy here. The All Powers S300 Plus and the 100 watt flexible solar panel are my two most used ultra portable devices that I have in my collection at this point. All Powers has really knocked it out of the park on this one. I know a lot of you are going to complain about this not having lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry, but on a unit that's targeted for the ultra portable like this one is, I think it makes a lot of sense to go with the standard NMC chemistry that uh, these guys are using just for the weight savings. And this isn't the thing I'm cycling, you know, every day to run my house or anything like that. It's just when I needed some quick portable power for my devices, I grab it and go. And this solar panel is so easy and light and easy to deploy. It just makes these two a winning combination. I'm going to leave links for uh, both of these products down in the description below and in a pinned comment so you guys can check them out further. But I always say the smartest people are in my comment section, so I want to hear from you. Please leave your comments down below. I try to read and respond to all of them. And if you value these real world tests that uh, I put uh, these devices through, consider doing four things for me. First one is liking the video. The second one is subscribing. The third one is commenting. And the fourth one is sharing. Those are 100% free for you to do and they really benefit the channel and uh, help give me the added uh, excitement and motivation to continue uh, with this uh, endeavor. It takes a lot more effort and time to be a producer of content than it is to be a consumer of content. So please show a little love and uh, do those four things. I would really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Sure appreciate you. We'll catch you next time.